Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. I am here to help you make sense of everything you've been learning in class. In this lesson, we're gonna learn about Vesper theory. Vesper, what is that? Do you know what Vesper theory is? Leave me a comment and let me know. While you're at it, go ahead and press the like and subscribe button. Grab your notes, grab something to write with. Let's get started. So you might be thinking, what is Vesper? And this is obviously not a word. That's because this is an acronym or abbreviation. Let's see what VESPER actually stands for. Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion. We've talked about electrons in the past and how they're negatively charged. We've also talked about how like charges hate other like charges. Same thing here. VESPER theory uses the idea that electrons hate each other they don't want to be near each other because they have the same charge. They're both negative. This repulsion is going to give the molecules their shape. We call that Vesper. Electron pairs or electron groups, they can be the electrons that are a part of the bond. Remember, it takes two electrons to make one bond. Well, that's an electron group or an electron pair. Also, the lone pairs, those non-bonding electrons, we also consider those electron pairs or electron groups. So as we dig in and really start looking at these shapes, remember two types of electron groups, the electrons within the bond and the electrons in the lone pair, the non-bonding pair. These are the shapes that we're gonna learn. Linear, bent, trigonal planar, trigonal pyramidal, and tetrahedral. So before we really dig into these shapes, one more thing that we need to be straight on. I'm going to use some letters as a general formula. Anytime you see the letter A, then you're gonna know that's the central atom. Anytime you see the letter X, this represents atoms that are bonded to the central atom. And then anytime you see E, that's the lone pairs. A, central atom, X, those are the atoms bonded to the central atom, and E, the lone pairs. The first shape we're gonna talk about is when we only have one electron group on the central atom. So our general formula would look like this. A, X, remember A is the central atom. X, that is an atom bonded to the central atom. It would look like this. Again, A being our central atom, X being the atom bonded to that central atom. We call this shape linear. It's just a straight line. That's all it can be. If you have two elements, you're only ever going to get a straight line. Let's look at a real example. H2, hydrogen gas. If we were going to draw the Lewis dot structure for hydrogen gas, remember hydrogen only has one valence electron, and if you have two hydrogens, they're gonna share those two electrons to make a bond like this. So if we were gonna look at a model of H2 or two atoms bonded together, it could look like that, where we have the red bonded to the white, still that linear shape. And I've built a model for us so we can see a 3D representation of that. If we were to call this the central atom, here's the atom bonded to the central atom, and you see it's just linear, it makes a line. The first example, we had one electron group bonded to the central atom. Now we've got two electron groups bonded to the central atom. So that general formula is AX2. We have two elements bonded to the central atom, and this is going to make a linear molecule. Let's look at a real example. Beryllium dichloride. Beryllium being the central atom. Two chlorines, those are our elements that are bonded to the central atom. Now, if we were gonna draw the electron dot structure for beryllium chloride, this is what we're going to get. We've got the central atom, and we have two elements bonded to the central atom. Again, this shape is linear, and we show that with 180 degrees. Now, I have another example I want you to look at, carbon dioxide. Now, the main reason why I'm showing you this second example is because I wanted you to notice those two double bonds on either side of carbon. Even though we know that each bond is a pair of electrons, so we would count that as one pair, two pair, one pair, two pair. When we're talking about Vesper shape, it really doesn't matter if it's a single bond, double bond, triple bond. If it's a bond of some sort, we just consider that to be one electron group. It didn't matter if we had a single bond that held the chlorines to the beryllium, or if we've got double bonds for the oxygen to hold to the carbon. We still have a central atom, and we have two atoms 
bonded to the central atom, that's always going to be linear. Here's a 3D. Central atom, two elements on either side. So let's look at all the different shapes, and there are going to be more than one, when we have three electron groups on the central atom, because we've got some options here. There's always going to be the central atom, and so one option is having a central atom with three elements on the central atom, with a general formula of AX3. Central atom, three atoms bonded. Remember, electron groups hate each other. Bonds hate each other, lone pairs hate each other. They want to be as far away from each other as possible. Let's go back and look at that last example again really quickly. So if we have our central atom, these groups here are going to be as far away from each other as possible because they hate each other. They repel each other. They are repulsed by each other. That's why you have one on one side, one on the very opposite side. These bonds are as far away from each other as possible. When you have three electron groups, that's going to be a little bit different, but the idea stays the same. Those bonds hate each other, and they're going to move as far away from each other as possible. Those three bonded atoms that are represented by X, they're 120 degrees away from each other. And we know a full circle is 360 degrees. You divide that by three, 120. For my students that I have in class, I don't really make you memorize those angles. Maybe your teacher does, so you might consider memorizing those. I'm really just kind of showing you those angles so you really get an idea of the fact that these bonds are equa angles from each other because we want to be as far away from each other as possible. This shape is called trigonal planar. Trigonal because there's three, tri. Planar because they're sitting all in the same plane. Let's look at this. It's all in the same plane, like a sheet of paper. They're all sitting flat. Here's my two-dimensional of trigonal planar. And let's look at a real example of that. So a good example would be boron trichloride. Boron's one of those really weird elements that have a full octet with six electrons. And so it only cares to make three bonds. So this is a really good example of one central atom and three bonded atoms. If we were to draw the Lewis dot structure, we would draw it like this. When we were learning how to draw covalent bonds and we did Lewis dot structures, this is how we did it. But now we know those bonds, they hate each other. They want to be as far away from each other as possible. And the way that I have it drawn right here, they're not as far away as possible. This is not trigonal planar. This is trigonal planar. This is what actually happens. Those bonds want to be as far away as possible. Let's bring back our model. This could be our boron, chlorine, 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 trigonal planar. They're equal angles from each other, 120. Let's look at another example where there's three electron groups bonded to the central atom. Here's a general formula that shows us we have a central atom, two atoms are bonded to the central atom, and then there's a lone pair. Now remember, we treat bonds and lone pairs as electron groups, so they kind of behave the same. Bonds and lone pairs are repulsed from each other. So you see how we still got that trigonal planar look? The only thing is, we don't see those electron pairs. So what we're really looking at is this. Central atom, two bonded atoms. You see here, we're not seeing those lone pairs. So we call this shape bent. This is bent shape. Now, even though we don't see those lone pairs there, that force of repulsion is still there and they're forcing those bonds downward. Here's a three-dimensional model of this. And I went ahead and put that lone pair here. So you see we've got three electron groups on the central atom, but only two of which are actual atoms. This is the lone pair. But we have to think about those lone pairs because the repulsion forces those bonds down. And that's how we get this bent shape. Let's look at a real example of that. We have SO2, sulfur dioxide. Again, remember, it doesn't matter about that double bond. See that double bond there? We don't care. That's just one electron group. 
And then the single bond, another electron group. You see I'm pointing to those lone pairs on oxygen? I just wanted to bring that to your attention that those don't really count. We're really just focused about the central atom. If the lone pairs are on an outside terminal atom, we just ignore them. Let's see how sulfur dioxide actually looks. Because remember, these lone pairs are pressing against those bonds. So really and truly, we're going to get this bent shape. Let's look to see all the different shapes that we will get when there's four electron groups on the central atom. Our first example has one central atom and four atoms bonded. So our general formula is AX4. Now here for the first time, do we have these solid thick lines here? That's what I'm talking about. And this kind of like shadowy line. That's because we're drawing in two dimension, but this is a three dimensional object. So these little hash mark lines, that's for like if you're going behind the paper and the really dark bold line, that's if it's coming out of the paper towards you. Now, if we had a sphere, you know, we're in three dimensional, those atoms are going to be, again, equal angles from each other because they've got to be as far away from each other as possible. So if one angle is larger than the other, that's going to put one of the atoms closer to the other atoms and they all want to be equal because they all hate each other. When you have four atoms coming off the central atom, this is called tetrahedral. I'm hoping that prefix tetra sounds familiar. Remember tetra, that was the prefix for four when we were writing the formulas for molecular compounds. Tetrahedral. Again, here's another 2D representation of tetrahedral. Let's look at a 3D representation of tetrahedral. So here, central atom, four bonded atoms. And here, look, it's three-dimensional. So these four atoms are going to be equal angles from that central atom. All equal angles because they all hate each other. Tetrahedral. Let's look at a compound that would make a tetrahedral shape. Okay, so here, if we had carbon tetrahydride. Tetra, we got four hydrogens. Carbon tetrahydride. One central atom, four bonded atoms. Now, if we were drawing the Lewis dot structure, this is how we would draw it. We would put the carbon in the center because carbon always goes in the center. We would put hydrogens on the outside because hydrogens can only go on the outside. This is exactly how we were taught to draw this. But now we know that's not exactly what's really happening. Because we have these electron groups that repel each other, they're going to get in that shape of the tetrahedral. And this is how we would draw it. Again, showing that dark line to show one of the hydrogens coming out of the page and the little shadow line to show that one of the hydrogens is going back through the page. Four electron groups. They don't all have to be atoms. Let's look at another example. In this example, we've got a central atom, three bonded atoms, and a lone pair. Now this kind of looks familiar because four electron groups, it's going to be in that basic tetrahedral shape, but one of those are lone pairs. Remember, lone pairs, they're not really going to be a part of the shape, but they are going to force the shape into a different position. So those angles still 109.5. Here's another two-dimensional model, so you can kind of see how the lone pairs are not there, but the lone pairs have thrown those bonds down. We call this shape trigonal pyramidal. Trigonal, Again, because there's three bonded atoms, pyramidal, because they're going to make a shape of a pyramid. Let's look at a three-dimensional model to see that pyramid shape. So our yellow atom, that's our central atom. We've got three bonded atoms, but remember, we've got that lone pair. And the lone pair is not visible, but it shifts those bonds down to make that pyramid shape. Let's look at a real example. We have phosphorus trichloride. And if we were going to draw the Lewis dot, this is how we would draw it. Phosphorus is in the center because it's the least electronegative. It has three chlorines bonded to it and a lone pair. This is exactly how we learned to draw it. But now we realize that is not the shape it's going to take. Those lone pairs are going to shift those bonds down. Trigonal pyramidal. When we have four electron groups, we've even got more shapes. Because if we have our central atom, we could only have two atoms and two lone pairs. And so here again, we've got that angle 109.5 because those lone pairs are going to shift those bonds down. This time, though, we have two sets of lone pairs. Those two sets of lone pairs are shifting those bonds down. 
Let's look at a two-dimensional model of that. Now the yellow represent the two lone pairs and the white represent the atoms that are bonded. We call this shape bent. Let's look at a two-dimensional shape that doesn't include the lone pairs to see that bent shape just a little bit better. Let's also look at a three-dimensional representation. I think that really helps. So again, the central atom who had four electron groups, this time two of them are atoms, two of them are lone pairs. Lone pairs hate bonds, and so these lone pairs shift these bonds down. All of the groups equal angles from each other. This is bent. Now let's look at the very popular compound that's bent. You've known this compound's bent forever probably, but let's talk about why. H2O, water. Every year I teach chemistry, almost all of my students always know that water is bent. Now they don't call it bent, you normally call it Mickey Mouse. Just about any student I've ever talked to knows that water is in the shape of Mickey Mouse. And now we know why. Those lone pairs are gonna shift up and they're going to push those hydrogens down to give us that bent shape. Let's look at the last example that we will have when we have four electron groups on the central atom. Okay, so if we have a central atom, only one bonded atom, three lone pairs. What? Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so this shape is going to be linear because we've only got two atoms. Two atoms always are going to be linear. If we look at hydrochloric acid and if we consider chlorine to be the central atom, we see that chlorine has three lone pairs and one bond. Let's look at the three-dimensional representation of that. Chlorine, three lone pairs, and those three lone pairs are gonna shift this bond this direction. So we still have that tetrahedral shape. It's just that three of those spots are lone pairs. So again, we get a linear molecule. Well, that's our lesson on Vesper. I hope it helped. Again, if you did not press the like and subscribe button, go ahead and do that. Also, go ahead and press the bell from red to gray. Do you have any friends or family struggling in chemistry? I know you all want to make an A. Go ahead and share this video. Until next time, bye y'all.